Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to another episode of Cars and Life. Well, I wanted to give you an update. Uh, it's been a while since I posted. I've been getting a few comments like what's going on with the build, and I thought I'd share with you guys some news. Good, good, good news and bad news. Um, I guess the good news is uh, the car is running. That's the good news, part of the good news. Um, and I just wanted to go over kind of what I've done to it um, the past few months. Um, you know, I've already added, I think you guys have seen the, the wide body flares that I've added. Um, it's a wide body kit basically. Um, this is the true fiber kit. Um, it's pretty reasonably priced. And these attach to the car with a set of fasteners here. Um, and the wheels are on. Um, these are Ford Star, uh, 12 inch wide with a six millimeter offset. With uh, Kumwax to ACR, ACRs, um, V720s in the back, 355 millimeters wide, and then Continental Extreme Contacts in the front, 305s. Um, and these tires are actually quite squishy. Uh, they're very squishy. So I might be replacing them one of these days, although it, they give a nice ride. Um, so, um, yeah. What I recently added um, was APR, the side skirt um, splitters. I think that's what you call them. Uh, these are carbon fiber. These are pretty nice. Um, I also added the rear diffuser too, which um, I'm not going to show you today. Um, that's on the car. Looks pretty good. And that's about it. I've just been driving around. Um, I think you guys have been following my channel. I had a couple of oil leaks. One from the valve cover and then the other one from the oil pan. Um, so I got those fixed, um, so no oil leaks anymore, so I was happy about that. Um, so I guess the bad news is, um, you know, I was, um, my goal was to get, um, twin turbos. Um, it really was an objective of mine, I wanted twin turbos in my car. Unfortunately, um, the twin turbo manufacturer particular company um, for whatever reason I don't know uh, they're going through some kind of a personal crisis or something um, they're not able to build the kit apparently um, so rather than monkeying around I decided to go with a single turbo kit and this video um, it's kind of a transition kind of, kind of why I'm making this video is for those three valve Mustang owners um, you know, if you want to install twin turbos, you're probably in a probably at a in a quandary about what to do. Um, and unfortunately, the three valve kits they're very limited. Um, there's actually only maybe three kits in the country um, that actually are being made now. And some of those are, eh, you know, they're not mass produced, so there's going to be a pretty big leak time and you might be playing games with the owner you know who knows so anyway that's what this video is kind of devoted for devoted to um <clears throat> to kind of go over what options are out there for three valve busting owners if you want a twin turbos or even single turbos okay so what i want to do is i'll start with the twin turbo kits um that are out there for the three valve and i'm going to go into the single turbos and i'm going to end with the turbo the turbo kit that i actually chose to install and i've actually already purchased um, so this is uh, Turbo Horsepower. This is a company that's been around since around 2000, mid 2000s. Um, what I understand with the forums, these kits are actually very nice. Um, anybody who has them is very happy with them. So here's the uh, one of the pictures of the kit. We have twin turbos here. Um, this is, you know, I think it's pretty nice. Um, this is the kit that I really wanted <clears throat> like I said before it just didn't work out um, so this kit's gonna run around eight grand eight thousand um, dollars that's just the base kit um, I was gonna get 61 millimeter billet wheel turbos um, and it's gonna increase the price a little bit um, the next option is the SNH performance twin turbo stealth kit um, so the, the previous kit 
um, the turbo sit inside the engine bay um, and it's just your typical uh, twin turbo setup uh, you know the oil uh, feeds down to your um, oil pan um, via gravity um, and the turbos are cooled um, and lubricated with engine oil um, on the other hand SNH performance they sell a twin turbo kit and this one's actually the turbos are actually located um, on the bottom of the car um, kind of near the oil pan and to, to get around having to use a scavenging pump um, they use these comp turbos which are or actually oilless um, they have sealed bearings in there they don't require oil they do require rebuilds I guess after a 50,000 or so miles um, so this I was considering this kit very seriously I was gonna buy it um, but again it didn't work out um, the owner there's a lot of excuses um, you know why the owner uh, was doing something else or yada yada so I didn't end up getting this one um, so this one actually put down I think pro dyno I know I saw a YouTube video that put down around nine nine something the horsepower and only 18 pounds of boost which I thought was pretty impressive um, so that's that um, and obviously in the engine bay you're not gonna really see it so that was sort of a disadvantage I wanted to see uh, something in the engine bay I wanted to open up the engine bay and see something really cool really pop out at you um, but this one there's really nothing pops out of you so it was one disadvantage uh, functionally though um, the SNH performance kit actually you know it's gonna run the coolest um, it's probably gonna be the most efficient um, what sort of is scary is the wireless turbos but apparently they got those sorted out they got those figured out so maybe it's not a big deal um, the next option that I found um, was the Garrett twin turbo kit they kind of put together a while ago uh, this one would be perfect unfortunately um, one of the turbos they actually stick the passenger side turbo they stick really close to the firewall um, and they did that to avoid having to relocate the fuse box and PCM so if they wouldn't have done that they would have put the passenger side turbo in the front next to where the driver side turbo is I would have bought this kit because it's only like three grand um, all you have to do is add um, the charge pipe and that's about it in the intercooler um, but ATP apparently sells those those items so you might be able to get away with four hundred four thousand dollars for a twin turbo kit and I thought that was actually um, so down here you can actually see they sell a few other items for the kit um, so I just didn't like the way that looked I didn't like the sort of anti-symmetry with regards to the passenger and driver side turbo so I, I said eh, even though it's fairly cheap I'm not gonna not gonna go that route so um, that was pretty much the only kits that I identified twin turbo wise that you can actually buy um, I'm sure there's tons of companies you know mom and pops that are um, offering custom turbo kits um, you know in your local area um, unfortunately there wasn't any, any anything in my local area that I found in, in Albuquerque um, turbo horsepower is actually located in Albuquerque and um, you know that was pretty much my option <clears throat> so the next option it's a single turbo kit by on three performance I was actually so almost every option I was close to buying uh, probably except for the Garrett kit um, but this one I mean eighteen hundred dollars two thousand dollars for a single turbo kit you know is almost hard to really pass up and they have this new so if you go down to the options they have uh, a new 84 millimeter um, ceramic ball bearing turbo upgrade or even the 405 the journal bearing 405 um, you know this thing will connect right up to the to the system plumbing 84 millimeters and I'm like cool so I can have a total a complete kit for like you know 2,500 bucks and that was so tempting let me tell you um, so the issue with this kit is I have a a BMRK member and pretty much um, it does not fit um, you're gonna have to do some custom work 
and I didn't really want to worry about that. The next thing with on three is, you know, I didn't really want to have an on three kit in my car. Um, you know, tons of people have them. They're actually everything that I've seen. They they're actually very good. Um, but I don't know. I just I just didn't want something that was considered cheap in my car since I spent so much time and money on it. Even though it was very tempting, let me tell you. Um, and then we get to um, the last option, and that's the Hellion kit. Um, and Hellion Performance is actually based out of my hometown, Albuquerque. So that was another, um, I guess, not reason why I went with them, but it was a factor, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so I think the major factor in this is the kit's the lead time is like two weeks. And you know you're going to get something. You know, you're going to pay somebody. It's going to actually arrive. You're not going to have to, you know, mess around with, you know, talking to people, having them not return your calls or emails or whatever. Um, so, you know, you call them, they pick up. You know, usually you talk to Jeff. He's there to answer your question. So for me, it made sense. Um, <clears throat> so what I, I, I ordered this kit from lethalperformance.com. And... Um, this allowed me not to pay taxes, income taxes, state income taxes in New Mexico. If I would have bought the kit from Halion directly, I would have had to pay taxes. Um, so I saved about a thousand bucks with shipping, and I'm actually going to pick up the kit tomorrow. So that's going to be kind of cool. Um, so I, I went ahead and got the boost controller. I got um, the, uh, the turbo blanket. And I didn't, want, I didn't want the fuel injectors since I'm buying those separately. Um, and kind of the key is you don't need to select the turbo snort billet blow off valve if you're going to go with an upgrade. So I went with um, the 76 millimeter precision GTS, um, which is really the 76 um, CEA turbo. Um, from Ethel Performance. Um, so if you're ordering this, you don't need to select the Turbo Smart Billup blow-off valve because they're going to provide you that anyway if you select the upgraded Turbo. Just a kind of local knowledge there. Um, so grand total was like 7k on this website. Um, you know, I think that's not even including taxes too. Um, so if you order from Haley, it's going to cost you a thousand bucks more. I would suggest ordering it from the performance if you're in New Mexico residence for sure. Um, so that's it folks. Um, so supposedly with the upgraded turbo, uh, the turbo itself is rated for a thousand wheel horsepower. Um, based on my calculations to get a thousand wheel horsepower out of my car, I'm going to need 26 PSI of boost. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to hit that. Maybe for dyno day or something, running E85, you know, whatever. Um, but for normal driving, I'll probably run at 800 wheel horsepower, 850. It's going to be good enough for me on the street. Um, so something to note about this kit, um, something I didn't really pay attention to, is this type of turbo kit is called a draw-through. So you'll notice that the MAF sensor is actually right after the, the air intake. And then after that is the turbo. So. Um, these type of systems, you need a bypass valve instead of a blow-off valve. So right here, you have this bypass valve. So air in this um, charge pipe is going to be vented into the intake um, right here, and they have to do that because air that's in this in the charge pipe has already been registered by the mass airflow sensor. So you have to you have to vent it back into um, the air intake, otherwise. The engine um, is going to get an amount of air that it's not thinking it's going to get. So that's something I didn't pay attention to. Um, whereas uh, the ON3 turbo kit, for example, um, the mass airflow sensor is going to be located within the charge pipe itself. And it's going to have a blow off valve, um, which makes a nice hissing sound. Uh, whereas this, it'll make a hissing sound, but it won't be nearly as loud. So that's just something that you know there's trade-offs and you can read up on 
um, you know, on the literature to see what the advantages and disadvantages are of draw through versus um, the other type, which I'm, see I'm forgetting right now for some reason. Blow through. Blow through versus draw through. That's, that's what it's called. Um, so that's pretty much those systems that I found. Um, you know, the other option is, of course, supercharging. However, you know, um, and I, I installed a supercharger in 2009 on this car. Um, that was an E-Force 2300cc or 2.3 liter um, supercharger um, by Edelbrock. That was actually pretty, it's a pretty good kit. It worked very well. Um, I was able to get up to 580 horsepower um, at the flywheel, about 510 at the re wheels. And, you know, uh, that worked for a while. Um, then I blew my engine, and then I just wanted to try something different. Um, and I'm just going to do a, a single turbo kit. So I guess in hindsight, if you're kind of on the edge of, you know, you have a three-valve car, you know, you can, you can actually do a, a Coyote four-valve swap. If your plan is to install turbos or twin turbos, I would definitely go with the four valve option. I would do the Cody swap if I had to do it all over again. Because this, I mean, there's there's so many kits out there for the four valve, which is going to make more sense in the long run. Um, so I was unfortunately, because um, of the limitations on the three valve, I decided to go with a single single kit. Um, so that's that. Um, I think that's it. I think, um, you know, if you have found any other uh, kits out there, if you know of any other kits, let me know. Um, and if you, this is your first time stopping by, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.